So welcome to class six on legislation as it relates to special populations. A uh, very important piece for any of us who want to work with clients, who want to work in the healthcare field, understand some of the key pieces of legislation that are affecting our careers and our lives, really. So if, these, if you look at the overview slide, these are all the different acts we will go through in this class. And of course, there will be some small group presentations on specific pieces of legislation as we described in the in-class assignment. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what you found about these. So, um, so it's quite a bit. All of these affect who we are as a nation today. And we will, um, you know, we'll go into these in a little bit more detail. Of course, the, the act that started it all, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And a lot of us are probably very familiar about the components of it, that it prevents employment discrimination on race, color, religion, sex, includes pregnancy and family leave or your national origin. But probably a lot of us are not aware that it applies to businesses with 15 plus employees. So that is probably something that you did not know. And so employers that don't have, that are very small family owned businesses may not need to um, follow the Civil Rights Act. So that is still a little scary, you know, in 2013. The Equal Pay Act of 1963 indicated that women were supposed to be paid the same for the same work. However, this has not been the case. Overall, women are paid 77 cents for every dollar that men make. And um, if you catch one of the videos about Lily Ledbetter, and that was the Fair Pay Act of 2009. The issue with the Fair Pay Act as it was, the Equal Pay Act were, was that women had to file their case within 180 days. So that's what, six months. And when Lily Ledbetter discovered that she had been paid for many, many years, far below what other men who started at the same time or who even started after her were getting paid. Um, so you couldn't file a lawsuit because the time period or the grace period had passed. So what the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act of 2009 did, it waived that 180 day filing notice so that any woman who realizes she is being paid substantially less than her male counterparts can file a lawsuit against that at any time. There is no longer, you know, a 180 day grace period to do that. So as a result of her discovering this something like 20 years later. And it was interestingly one of the first pieces of legislation signed by President Obama in 2009, right after he took the oath of office. A lot of us are probably also familiar with the Age Discrimination Act in 1967, which prevents discrimination by age and it applies to anybody age 40 plus. The problem with a lot of these acts, whether it's the you know Equal Pay Act or the Civil Rights Act or the Age Discrimination Act, these can get very difficult to prove your case. So it's hard to say whether someone has been discriminated against purely as a result of their race or their gender or their age. And with more and more people having to face unemployment and people in the older age groups, it is very tough to prove. But there are cases um, you know, that do go forward to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, also known as the EEOC. So one of the ones you're most familiar with from the 1970s, Title IX of the Educational Amendments Act. And I know one of the groups is going to be presenting on that, particularly as it relates to football at Winthrop. So it prohibits discrimination on the basis of gender in any institution that receives federal funds. So it's not just colleges and universities, it's any type of you know, P through 12 education that the um, training must be equal and then the resources must be equivalent. I'm sure most of us in our program are familiar with athletics um, as it relates to Title IX, but it also includes dormitory facilities and it also includes science and math education. 
so that uh, women and girls have to have the same opportunities and the same resources for science and math education as boys. And they also must have an uh, equal number of quality dormitory facilities at, uh, at the university.